Hey everybody, Tom here with Hidden Beats, and today we are with Shakura Saida. Did I say that right? Yes. <laughs> okay, I honestly, in my head, I was like, I'm going to screw this up already. <laughs> <laughs> you better not. <laughs> We're here today to talk about you and about your music and just kind of what you bring to the world. But for those who are new, can you give a little introduction about yourself? Hi, everybody who's new to me. My name is Shakura Saida, and I'm a singer-songwriter entertainer, playwright, uh, actor, producer, and all around great dog walker. Gotta love a good dog walker. <laughs> so I'm curious, what got you into music? Oh my gosh, I got into music. Um, I think I probably always loved music and always loved singing, but I was told at a very early age that I couldn't sing. So I never thought of it as something that I would be able to do. And um, when I was in high school, I had this amazing theater arts teacher by the name of Mrs. Caddick. And we would have to do these monologues. And um, after one monologue, she said, you, you must, you must, you know, go to Sheridan College and you must become a singer. And I should explain that Mrs. Caddick looked like the most beautiful Mary Poppins ever. She had jet yeah. black hair, red lipstick. She had clothes that flowed everywhere as she walked. And she was just uber gorgeous and dramatic and so whatever she said was gospel and I said you know I I, I like singing but I think I'm going to be an actor I, I kind of like acting and she said oh you always act but you need to sing hmm. and so I said okay and I started singing and I was really bad really really bad at it you know the person that told me that I couldn't sing wasn't wrong I found out at 25 um, that I had a hearing loss Okay. Um, I don't hear bass in my right ear at all. I have a severe hearing loss in my right ear and a moderate in my left. So my musical journey was kind of stilted because I couldn't hear properly. Mm -hmm. And once I got that under wraps and started learning how to listen for bass and learning how to communicate with that instrumentation, then um, things got a little bit easier for me. Yeah, I mean, that's... Once you learn those steps, I suppose everything gets a little easier after that. Well, once you once you learn your deaf, yeah. Once you figure out where Waldo is, you'll always see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the main reason we're here to talk today is about your recent award that you have with the Heard Music Award from SoCan. How mm -hmm. how was hearing about that that win for you? Dude, I've only just started to stop crying. I'm not <laughs> yeah. even lying. It's only you and I, between you and I, I've only just stopped crying. Um I know the process of deliberation that goes on between the uh, people, the women that are choosing, you know, the um, awardees. I know how much time and effort goes into it. And so to be chosen was was um, probably one of the biggest honors that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm incredibly humble. To be chosen by your peers is different. It just feels different because you know that they know what you're going through as an artist, especially as a female artist. And um, and they're giving you not just a nod of approval, but a huge stamp of approval. So um, it's, it's been pretty special. Mm -hmm. How has working with SoCan in, in these types of processes been for you? I think that um, my world changed when I realized that SoCan and SoCan Foundation were there for me as an artist, as a singer songwriter. Um, to help me collect money. That's been mm -hmm. huge, especially during COVID, getting those checks from people who are downloading, you know, music or mechanical royalties, all of those things. Honestly, life changer, mm -hmm. life changer. And SoCam Foundation helps artists in so many different ways, you know, from helping with showcases, helping with travel, different awards that they have. Um, it really means that as an artist, especially in these times when funding is getting cut left, right and center, by organizations, by corporations, by government funding agencies, it really helps to know that you have something like SoCan Foundation behind you, making sure that you don't fall. Mm -hmm. And so like I've got to interview more than a few people in different types of award scenarios. And it's interesting because their experience with SoCan speaks so much, but some don't even know it exists. Some don't even realize that this is available out there for them to, to use as a platform. Yeah, I think, you know, I think we as artists need to do a better job of mentoring each other and reaching out to our groups of community, our community of musicians, people that we know, and letting them know that these things are out there for them. Um, 
finding out by accident is not a great, great way to go. I think mm-hmm. SOCAM really does do the best job that they can at, at outreach. Um, but I do think that we as musicians need to make sure that we're looking out for our fellow musicians more um, and that we're helping these organizations with their outreach, with their grassroots outreach. Yeah, hundred really percent. Yeah, yeah. So, SOCAN's always been great from what I've seen, but the the more the more words out there from other people definitely helps. Yeah, them. I think we need to do more community outreach ourselves and and not just leave it up for the organizations, especially because again, when you have all these cuts and everything happening, it really helps to know that the musicians believe in you enough to get other musicians hyped up and supporting you and putting the word out there that that we need more funding in order to keep arts happening. Mm-hmm. So this award, short of of the the peer support and the peer acknowledgement, what else does this award do for you? Um, well, it just happens. So I don't know what it'll mean on a national or international stage, but I certainly think that every accolade you get, especially when it comes to homegrown accolades, things that you can get Canadian wise, I think that they do help you on an on an international stage because if you're getting that acknowledgement from your own country then other countries buy into that yeah you know it, it always helps when going out you know i have a list of of things that i've been awarded and acknowledgements that i've gotten because it really does um matter when i'm touring france or touring switzerland or touring italy or wherever oh your country gave you this i don't know this award but wow you mm-hmm. know you, you must mean something in your country so welcome to our country sort of thing for sure yeah having having those awards just is is that Almost like a, a nod. Say, yep, you're good. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. So you have a new release of Hold On To Love album. I'm curious yes. about the story behind that. Behind the name or behind the album? I guess both in a sense. Well, the album took 10 years. Um, I, re- I released Time in 20, 2012. God, it feels so weird saying that. <laughs> and, um, and then hold on to love was released in 2022 Mm -hmm. and um it was uh it was a long process it took me about five years to decide that i really wanted to do another album the whole time was a double album Mm -hmm. so what that allowed me to do was to take a little bit more time to record again because the, uh, the radio stations kept playing it over and over again you know got a lot of use out of the two disc Um, And then in 2017, I decided I was ready to start writing again. I got a writing grant from the Toronto Arts Council and I paid my rent, paid my bills. And then I flew down to Martinique where I stayed for a month and I wrote pretty much every day. I would put these big pieces of paper on my walls in my bedroom and I'd write all the lyrics that I was thinking of out. So every night before I went to sleep, I'd see the lyrics. Every morning I'd get up, I'd see them. And I change lyrics around, you know, cross some words out, add new words. And at the same time, I was sending um, melody ideas, lyrics um, to my friend Donna Grantis, who was a co-writer on both Brown Sugar and Time. And um, and she was sending me melody lines and things like that. And we started working in that way, putting together songs. Mm-hmm. When I got back from Martinique, I drove to Minneapolis where Donna was living. And we spent three days putting together the songs so that she could make arrangements okay. based on, on our writings. And then in the fall of 2017, we started right, recording bed tracks, got the band together, went in the studio for like two, three days and just recorded bed tracks and started putting things down. And then um, my world changed. I had uh, a lot of loss from 2017 um, through to the end of 2018. Mm-hmm. And um, sort of lost motivation and was in a, a, a real state of, of um, I don't even know what it was. Just couldn't focus on, on music. Yeah. Couldn't focus on being happy, you know? And in 2019, um, I was invited to be part of the artist development program at Massey. Okay. And I also got a factor grant. So it was like, oh, I got to get this album done. I got to do this. So I was mm-hmm. very happy about that. And um, then the world shut down. Yeah. So it was like, okay, so you're still not ready to do this. And um, somehow through Book Crook and a lot of really great people at Massey, 
um, my co-producers, Roger Costa, and especially Donna Grantis, they just kept supporting me and helped letting me lean on them. And we got it done through COVID. And um, the songs, three of the songs were pre-recorded or pre-written. Clap Your Hands, the song that I wrote with Kev Moe, I recorded back in 2018 in his studio in Nashville. We had written that in 2014. Uh, Glad for Today and Hold On to Love were actually written by Donna and I for my 2009 album, Brown Sugar, but it didn't go with what we were doing back then, so we just shelved them. And the rest of the songs were created specifically for this album. And I couldn't think of a theme while all this other stuff was going on. But as the songs started coming together, it became really apparent that this album was made with love. This album was made through love. This album was made by believing in love and holding on to love. Mm -hmm. So it became really obvious that the title was going to be Hold On To Love. And And every song. Yeah. Sorry, Mm -hmm. go ahead. It just, it sounds like it fits. It sounds like the the right title for sure. It does. And every song relates to love in one way or another, whether it's self-love, self-realization, self-care, a romantic love, you know, queer love, it's all in there. And mm. um, I'm I'm really proud of this album. I really am. Yeah, I, I listened to some of it before the interview and it's it's delightful. I, I love the music out of it. I love that. I'm going to use that delightful. My album is delightful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, when putting together an album, I, there's a lot of people have different processes, but I'm curious, how hard is it to, to pick the right songs? Like, do you have a pool of songs and you try to whittle it down to a certain amount or how difficult does that get? Yeah, I probably had about another five songs that were part of our initial, um, we made bed bed tracks for them. um, And I tried doing ghost vocals for them and stuff like that. But it really came down to what is the story. Mm -hmm. And once you figure out what the story is, um, it becomes a lot easier. So once we realize Um, You know, I said to Donna very early on, I want to make a Roots album. I want to make an album that I'm actually singing on. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be wailing. I don't want to be, you know, doing all the acrobatics, none of that. I just want to sing for once. I just want to sing. And I want to tell stories. So the songs were chosen because I was able to sing and because I was telling a story. The other part of it was I really want that Roots vibe. You know, I want songs that really talk about you know where my musical roots are and so that helped us narrow down the songs and then the other part of it was of course finding that theme of love what fits within that theme of love you know black lives matter for me that's love that's Mm self-love you know um so ain't got nothing even though it's a rockier song that fit right in there you know complicated again it's sort of a rocky church kind of gospel vibe but it's all about, you know, um, violent love, you know, and and um, and love of children and, and things like that. And, and, and love that isn't necessarily great love, toxic love. Mm-hmm. So that was a really big part of it. And then it became about how do we place the songs in case someone does listen to them in order? You know, what is the story we're telling here? You know, and so the beginning of the story is you hold on to love. And then I'm um, taking it to the street is all about, you know, activism, self-love, you know, loving each other as a community. And then, you know, when you feel that you're down and out, you don't know where to go, clap your hands and moan. That's about the love of God, you know, the love of spirit, you know, calling on others for love. Um, yeah. And telling that story is probably really interesting, too, because especially nowadays we're in like a single release type of culture where everything is just one piece at a time, but putting together a work is, is always something more, more fascinating. I think anyways. Yeah. I'm old school. You know, I I know that we're supposed to be putting out singles in order to create interest and stuff, but I love putting an album on the turntable and listening to it from top to bottom or putting a CD in top to bottom. I want to listen to Tracy Chapman right from the beginning to the end. Mm-hmm. I want to listen to I want to listen to Super Trance even in the quietest moment from the top to the bottom, you know that to me is is what music is when it's when the, the artist creates it in that way, 
I believe in that story that an artist creates. You know, um, the next album, yeah, I probably do singles, but I think there's something to be said for creating that story and really working. Don and I really had deep conversations about which songs we put where, and you know, cutting out the titles and moving them around and singing the tops and the bottoms of each song and seeing how it melded with the next one. It was, it was a big process. Mm -hmm, for sure. Now, I'm curious, how do you think your music has evolved going back to the release of Time and to the release of Hold On To Love? Ooh, well, I think even going back further to Blueprint, my first album, my first blues album, um, I think every single album is, is really uh, a statement of who you are in that moment, yes? Mm -hmm. But I also think it's about how you want the world to see you. And with Hold On To Love, I actually didn't think about how I wanted the world to see me as much as I thought about who I am and how I fit in the world. Okay. And, and that realization really came about during COVID. This isn't a COVID album. All the songs were written before that, but how the album was put together and a lot of the instrumentation certainly had a lot to do with being self-isolated. Mm -hmm. So when you go through that, that, self-isolation and you have to really get in touch with who you are you know because I was living alone for the first time in 36 years no kids no partner just me myself and I and then a dog as opposed to when I wrote time when I had two kids I was living in a multi-generational house with my parents and my sister you know a completely different time mm -hmm. I was traveling a lot so my self-awareness of what I wanted to, how I wanted to express myself was greater. And my self-acceptance is greater. Even though I thought with time that I knew who I was and I didn't want to prove anything to anybody anymore, with Hold On To Love, grounded. You like the album or you don't. And I'm okay with that. You know, this is me on a platter or me on vinyl. You know, um, I'm I'm 60 this year. You know, I don't really have anything to prove to anyone except that I love to make music and that um, I have a lot of great musicians around me mm -hmm. and that I'm a great entertainer, you know. And if you if you believe in that, then I'm for you. And if you don't, that's OK. There's other great artists out there. I'm sure one of them will appeal to you. Yeah, 100 percent. And and you certainly don't look 60. Oh, thank you. You're my favorite. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> That's my goal is to be to be favorites if I can be. <laughs> now, I like to ask a couple fun questions when I'm doing interviews, mm -hmm. especially for first time ones that because sometimes I get to have multiple conversations. So absolutely. I think this one's going to be interesting because you have you have a fairly long career, so you might have an interesting insight. Mm -hmm. but what's one thing you think should be asked more in an interview that's not asked enough? What gives you life? Okay. You know, what what um what do you think about when you wake up in the morning? What's your what are your first thoughts? You know, what inspires you to create art? I think those are the things that really speak to the depth of who we are, you know. Um for me, one of the most important questions would be, um, who inspires me when I'm on stage? Where do I find the inspiration when I'm on stage? You know, because I had great mentors and um, and I have great designers that give me these great outfits that allow me to move in certain ways that I wouldn't move if I wasn't wearing those particular pieces. And and the mentors that I had spoke to me about how to how to have a stage presence and and how to make sure that my stage presence includes everyone, the musicians and and the audience, you know, all of those things are mm -hmm. important. Yeah. yeah, those are great questions. And I use this one because I can, you know, add to my repertoire a little bit. I love that. Go ahead and add to your repertoire. That's, that's the that. plan. <laughs> what, speaking of great mentors and things like that, what's some of the best advice you've ever been given? Ooh, I just wrote about this. Um, best advice from Jimmy Smith. I was a young girl and I was able to sit in with him. 
for the two nights that he played in Toronto. And he said to me, you have a good ear. You got a really good ear and you got, you got great timing. Trust yourself. And that was important because at that time I was doing a lot of jazz, a lot of R&B, doing a lot of cover music, playing with a lot of bands. And they were always trying to get me to follow them. Okay. But as, an, as a lead, they should have been following me. Mm -hmm. And so hearing Jimmy Smith say, trust yourself, allowed me to be, to be able to stand up for myself and say, no, listen to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, follow me. So that's been one of the big ones. Uh, Betty Lavette, um, she gave me this advice, but it wasn't the way that I tell it now, but, but it, it was basically to stand in my own authenticity, okay. to not, to not be something I'm not on stage, to not give more than needed on stage, to just sit in it and, and be real on stage. Was, that's one of the best things that she gave me a little, a little less than 10 years ago. And that really helped to change how i perform on stage a lot yeah, and those yeah. tidbits are probably really helpful sometimes on on low moments when you can look back and think about them absolutely absolutely and and i think keeping mentors around you who are able to relate when you talk about how down you are mm -hmm. but also speak to you about how to shift things for yourself you know and um they they really know you i think that's a really important thing as well For i've sure. learned i've learned uh through jackie richardson and slomi bay archie aileen joe seeley all these really great mentors to always keep a great community around me whether it be a community of musicians a community of women a community of of black people always keep really great communities around you so that you not only draw from them but you're also to, able to share what you have mm -hmm. and you know and and keep growing and keep just keep moving forward yeah it's yeah. all about building each other up from from different aspects absolutely mm -hmm. if you hear voices it's because i'm in the call and response studio okay. when i spoke about the great women that that dress me i'm i'm, I'm using their studio today for this interview mm -hmm. i noticed the the outfits behind you too and oh, nice yeah. little backdrop yeah yeah mm -hmm. they they make great clothing they they dress me they used to dress prince before he passed Ace and Abby. Um, uh, who else do you guys dress? Yell out. Oh, Cher, Motley Crue. Wow. Um, Donna Grantis when she was with Prince. Uh, Digging Roots, Amanda Roy, Misha Bruder gossman Mary Walsh. Uh, um, yeah, some is, pretty nice names. Is, is that good? Is that good? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll uh, I'll try to remember to link them. Well. I'll try yes, to link them in the do. description here. Please do, because they really, they do great work. It's all custom work, but they, a lot of bespoke, um, a lot of bespoke um, outfits as well. And, and fantastic. Any, um, Hill, what's Hill's last name? Hill Corcudas, who was up for producer of the year at the Juno. She mm -hmm. was jamming some of their um, designs on the weekend. And um, Ace and Abby was wearing their clothing as well. Yeah, yeah I, I just said him already. I just posted an interview with, I did an interview with Hill last week, actually. So did I have you? just, I think oh, she excellent. just hit my list. Oh, J Hill just did an interview with them last week. <laughs> yeah, so, and great women. They're friends of mine as well. So that's yeah. always a bonus. Yeah. Uh, fun question now is okay. who's someone on your go-to playlist that people might not expect you listen to? <laughs> Elton John, um, Steve Miller Band, Super Tramp. Those are my go-tos. I like Blue-Eyed Soul. Mm, yeah. um, I I love, um, what else do I love that might surprise people? Um, I love hip hop. So I love Toby, you know, Canada's Toby. Mm -hmm. I love Havaya Mighty. I also love um, Toby Inigwe, who's out of the States. Um, Kendrick Lamar. Um, what else do I love that people wouldn't think that I love? I love opera. I love anything operatic. Okay. You know? But but I'm a I'm a classic classic rock chick, you know, yeah. old school all the way. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of Motley Crue, we have them coming to Ottawa for Blues Fest, which is going to be pretty awesome. Oh my God, this could be amazing. Mm -hmm. be I'm, really I'm amazing. super excited. We have a pretty pretty neat lineup coming up for ten days of music here. Wow. You're going to actually Blackburn is coming up there as well. They were nominated for Juno. 
Mm-hmm. So Brooke Blackburn's going to do a solo before his brothers come on and do um, and do a band show a couple of days later. You want to hear a great storyteller and somebody who really represents, um, you know, Canadian blues going all the way back, all the way back to the underground. You really want to maybe get him on your show and maybe catch him at the fest. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'm writing that down to make sure I remember yeah. that here. There's so many things that come across my email. Sometimes it's hard to <laughs> hard to remember. As well. <laughs> so uh, another fun one then is who plays you in the movie of your life? Who plays me in the movie of my life? Oh my God, that's the best question <laughs> ever. Who plays me in the movie of my life? Hmm. That's a really good question. I don't know. It's a hard one. I, I, yeah, it's a really hard one. Yeah. I mean, I would love for it to be Angela Bassett because okay. I adore her. But um, I I don't know. There's so many amazing, amazing actors out there right now, you know, who I just adore um, especially Canadian. There's a lot of really great Canadian actors come out, mm-hmm. but um, I don't know. I, I'm going to say Angela because Angela can play, well, she would play the the me now. Okay. But she already did Tina Turner. So I don't know if she'd be into doing me, but maybe I could, you know, pay her enough, but I got to really research and figure this out. Now I got to figure out who's going to play me. There you go. Mm-hmm. Cause when that movie of your life comes out, you got to be ready. Yeah, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, yeah, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Really good question. Yeah. Now, if you were to introduce your music to someone for the very first time, what's the first song they have to listen to? The first song I want them to listen to is Do Done. Do Done? Okay. Do Done. It is an acapella song. And I wrote it um, for my girls, for my daughters. I wrote it um, because I was hanging out with my daughter's friends and they were speaking about how they felt about life and how lost they felt in some ways, you know, how they didn't feel that they actually had the direction figured out yet, the direction of their lives figured out yet. And Kyla Charter created this really wonderful soundscape of music behind me. And it is me just pared down to my truth. It is just my vocals and it is my heart and it is me expressing love, not just for my daughters, but for young people, for queer people, for people who feel marginalized, for people who um, who feel like they're outside of of the norm, which is actually the norm. Mm-hmm. You know, there is no real, you know, norm. Um, that would be the song that I would say. Start with that one. Okay. I like that one because it's it's very introspective, but also it can change at any moment because you might feel something different about it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, last two questions before Zoom mm-hmm. kicks us off, and I think are yes. the most important ones. What do you hope people take away from your music? Love. Love? Yeah, love and community. Mm-hmm. I want people to, um, when I was, must have been 15 or 16, I saw Diana Ross at the exhibition place in Toronto. The thing that I remember most is this beautiful woman standing up there and telling us all to hold hands with our neighbors, whether we knew them or not. And that for me is the core of what I believe in, in terms of community, whether it's food banks, whether it's shelters, whether it's you know, people who uh, are unhoused. I want people to listen to the music and think about community, think about love and how they can share love with their neighbors, Mm -hmm. how they can reach out and say to somebody, I see you and you matter to me, you matter to us and you're a part of us. You know, that's the most important thing for me. Yeah. Community is wonderful. And, and, if you can give community, why not? There's, you know, my family has been volunteering at one of the local food banks for going on 30 years now. Even we moved out of that community and like my mom still goes back to this day to yeah. volunteer there. Yeah. Yeah. We're just getting ready to do our big food drive, um, Easter food drive mm-hmm. in my neighborhood. And um, it's brought our community together. 
you know, because the neighbors come and they pick up these bags and we distribute them out to the neighborhoods. We've now gotten up to 2,500 bags that we distribute out. Okay. We get back like up almost 10,000 pounds of food over the weekend, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, and it allows people to see each other mm -hmm. and to recognize, you know, I can't judge you for where you live. I can't judge you for what you look like because there, but by the grace of God, go I. Yeah. So many people are one paycheck away from being out of a home and from being hungry. You know, there's too much going on right now for us to set our eyes to it. So, yeah, listen to my music while you're volunteering, while you're thinking about how you want to contribute to the communities around you, you know? Yeah, it, it'll always help a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Now, last question, and we're kind of going back a little bit to, mm -hmm. to earlier when you were talking about happiness. Are you happy now? I am so happy. In this moment, I am extremely happy. I am, I'm being me. Mm -hmm. I'm taking care of myself. I am surrounding myself with good people. I am surrounding great people. I am um, getting ready to go on tour. Nice. I leave for Portugal on April 2nd. And I am going to a conference to do a workshop. And then I'm touring France at the end of April. Then I go back to Portugal at the end of May. I go to Switzerland in June. Then I go back to France in July. So I'm back making music. I'm back creating music. Um, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I could be happier. I could have more work, but um, but I'm 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 at peace with where I am right now. I and, think happiness but, is a journey, yeah. so you have to. Oh, it all is. This. It is. Mm -hmm. I I actually believe happiness is an in the moment thing. If you sit down in this moment, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. Do I need anything in this moment? And no, I don't. I got the HERS Music Award. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got the award. I'm I'm good. I'm happy. That's that's great to hear. Yeah. And that's all the points yeah. I have written down. And it's great to to be able to pick your brain and kind of see what Thank makes you. you tick. Thank you. I love speaking with you. It's been great. Thank you so it, much. Where can people find you on social media? I'm at Shakura Saida. And um, that's on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I, I don't twit as much as I used to. I'm going to say twit. I'm not <laughs> saying X. I'm just mm -hmm. not, I don't twit as much as I used to, um, because you know, you know who, you know, did, you yep. know what, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm pretty, pretty present on social, on Instagram and Facebook and, uh, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to the day you stop by Ottawa so I can come out and catch your show live. I love that. I would love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring your wife and bring some ice cream. You got to go have, have some good ice cream. A hundred percent. I'll bring some of that real good stuff. I love that. <laughs> well, it was delightful getting to chat with you. And I certainly hope we get to do this again at some time. I hope so. Thank you so much for having me and take good care. You too. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.